Colonialism refers to the establishment, maintenance, acquisition, and expansion of colonies in one territory by people from another territory. It involves the control and exploitation of the indigenous population, often for economic gain or geopolitical power. Colonial powers often impose their political, economic, social, and cultural systems on the colonized people, leading to the marginalization, oppression, and even destruction of indigenous cultures and societies. While there isn't a literal playbook that governments follow for colonization, there are patterns, strategies, and tactics that colonial powers have historically employed. These strategies are often based on power dynamics, economic interests, cultural biases, and historical precedents. Some common elements of colonial strategies include divide and conquer, Colonial powers often exploited existing divisions within indigenous populations or created new divisions to weaken resistance and maintain control. This could involve playing different groups against each other, fostering internal conflicts or favoring certain groups over others. Economic exploitation. Colonizers typically sought to extract resources and wealth from colonized territories. This often involved the establishment of extractive industries, forced labor systems, and trade monopolies that benefited the colonizing power at the expense of the indigenous people. Cultural assimilation. Colonizers often imposed their own cultural norms, languages, beliefs, and values on indigenous populations, attempting to erase or undermine indigenous cultures and identities. This could involve forced conversion to a belief system, the suppression of indigenous languages, and the imposition of colonial education systems. Territorial control. Colonizers asserted control over land and territory through various means, including treaties, military conquest, and legal mechanisms. Indigenous peoples were often displaced from their ancestral lands to make way for colonial settlements, resource extraction, or infrastructure projects. Political domination. Colonizers established colonial administrations to govern the territories they controlled, often with little or no representation for the indigenous people. Indigenous forms of governance were often supplanted by colonial institutions, further marginalizing indigenous voices and interests. While these strategies varied depending on the specific historical context and the goals of the colonizing power, they reflect broader patterns of colonialism that have been observed throughout history. It's important to recognize that colonization is a complex and multifaceted process shaped by a wide range of factors, including geopolitics, economics, ideology, and cultural dynamics. For the divide and conquer throughout history and today, governments have employed this divide and conquer tactic to weaken indigenous populations. The strategy serves to maintain control and suppress resistance movements by exploiting divisions and fostering animosity between various groups. Here are several ways in which governments may perpetuate division among indigenous populations. Political manipulation. Governments may manipulate political processes and institutions to favor certain indigenous groups over others. This can involve providing resources, representation, or recognition to select groups while marginalizing or ignoring others. By playing favorites, governments sow discord and competition among indigenous communities, diverting attention from broader issues of collective rights and interests. Resource allocation. Governments often control access to land, natural resources, and economic opportunities. By distributing resources unequally among indigenous groups, governments can create competition and resentment. This unequal distribution can exacerbate existing tensions and fuel conflicts over territory and resources, further weakening indigenous solidarity. Legal frameworks. 
Governments may implement discriminatory legal frameworks that undermine indigenous rights and autonomy. Laws and policies that favor certain groups or exclude others from decision-making processes contribute to divisions within indigenous communities. For example, governments may grant land rights or development permits to specific indigenous groups while disregarding the claims of others, leading to disputes and infighting. Security forces. Governments may deploy security forces to suppress indigenous dissent and resistance. In doing so, they may selectively target certain groups or regions, exacerbating intergroup tensions. By labeling certain indigenous movements as terrorists or extremists, governments justify repressive measures and vilify legitimate grievances, further polarizing indigenous communities. External influence. External factors such as corporations or foreign governments may exploit divisions within indigenous populations to advance their own interests. By co-opting or supporting certain indigenous leaders or factions, external actors can manipulate internal dynamics and weaken indigenous resistance to extractive or development projects. Media manipulation. Governments may use propaganda and misinformation to create or exacerbate divisions within indigenous communities. By framing conflicts in divisive terms and highlighting intra-group rivalries, governments can foster distrust and hostility among indigenous groups, undermining efforts towards collective organizing and solidarity. Mechanism of monetary coercion. Using monetary incentives to coerce indigenous people into turning against their own communities is a sophisticated and insidious colonial tactic. This strategy plays into the broader framework of divide and conquer tactics, exploiting economic vulnerabilities to sow discord and undermine indigenous solidarity. Here's an in-depth discussion of how this tactic operates and its implications. Economic vulnerabilities. Many indigenous communities face economic hardships due to systemic marginalization, loss of traditional lands, and restricted access to resources. Colonial or governing powers exploit these vulnerabilities by offering monetary incentives, which can be particularly tempting in the face of poverty or economic instability. Creating dependencies. By providing financial rewards, the colonial powers create a dependency on the external economy, eroding traditional economies and self-sufficiency. This dependency can compel indigenous individuals to act against their community's interests, to maintain their new economic status, or simply to survive. Incentivizing collaboration. Individuals may be offered money, jobs, or other economic benefits to collaborate with the colonizers, participate in the displacement of their people, or suppress cultural practices and resistance movements. This not only undermines indigenous resistance, but also integrates indigenous individuals into the colonial system, making them complicit in the oppression of their own communities. Implications of the tactics. Undermining solidarity, monetary incentives can lead to divisions within indigenous communities as some members might be seen as betraying their people by cooperating with the oppressors for personal gain. This erodes trust and solidarity, which are crucial for collective resistance and maintaining cultural integrity. Cultural erosion. When individuals prioritize monetary gain over community and cultural values, it can lead to a gradual erosion of these values. The cultural fabric of the community may weaken, leading to loss of language, traditions, and social cohesion. Legitimizing oppression. Indigenous individuals who accept Monetary incentives and collaborate with colonial powers might be used to legitimize the colonial practices. They can serve as examples of the supposed benefits of colonial rule, masking the overall harmful impacts on the indigenous population. Moral and ethical conflicts. This tactic can inflict psychological stress on individuals as they navigate the moral and ethical implications of their choices. It can lead to internal conflicts, guilt, and long-term impacts on personal and communal identity. Historical and contemporary examples 
would include the Burmese military's tactics of installing leaders from ethnic groups and controlling them through financial incentives is a strategic maneuver aimed at exerting influence and maintaining dominance over various ethnic communities within Burma, Myanmar. This approach is part of a broader strategy of indirect rule, leveraging economic allurements to ensure compliance and loyalty from puppet leaders who are seen as representatives of their ethnic groups but serve the interests of the Burmese military regime. The strategic overview, installation of leaders, the military handpicks and installs leaders from within ethnic communities, often choosing individuals who are amenable to manipulation or those who prioritize personal gain over communal well-being. These leaders, while ostensibly representing their people, act under the influence or direct control of the military. Financial incentives. Once installed, these leaders receive financial incentives, privileges, and access to resources that they would not otherwise have. These benefits are contingent upon their cooperation with the Burmese military's objectives and policies, essentially making them beholden to the Burmese military regime control and compliance. The financial dependencies created ensure that these leaders remain loyal to the Burmese military. Their leadership positions become tools for the Burmese military to enforce its agenda, suppress dissent, and co-opt any resistance movements within the ethnic communities. The implications. Undermining authentic representation. The authenticity of ethnic group representation is severely compromised as installed leaders prioritize the Burmese military's interest over the welfare of their own community. This erodes trust within their community and can lead to internal divisions and conflicts. Manipulating ethnic tensions. By controlling these leaders, the Burmese military can manipulate ethnic tensions play groups against each other, and weaken the ethnic community's ability to organize and resist. This manipulation often exacerbates existing grievances and can fuel further conflict. Perpetuating dependency and control. The strategy reinforces a cycle of dependency where ethnic leaders are reliant on the Burmese military for their status, power, and economic benefits. This dynamic ensures ongoing control and diminishes the prospects for genuine autonomy or resistance. Impeding peace and reconciliation. Such manipulative tactics hinder the prospects for peace and genuine reconciliation in Burma, Myanmar, as they entrench military power and undermine any effort to build trust, foster dialogue, and achieve a lasting resolution to the ethnic conflicts. And, and genuine self-determination in Burma, Myanmar, necessitating concerted efforts for international awareness, advocacy, and support for the rights and aspirations of the country's ethnic minorities. Using monetary incentives to influence Native Americans into action against their own communities involved exploiting economic vulnerabilities for colonial or governmental gain. This tactic offers financial benefits this tactic offers financial benefits to individuals who comply with policies or actions detrimental to their people, fostering internal divisions and weakening collective resistance. It undermines the social fabric and cultural integrity of Native American communities, compromising their autonomy and rights. Encountering this manipulative strategy is essential for safeguarding the sovereignty and cultural heritage of Native American people. Utilizing monetary incentives to sway aboriginals in Australia against their own communities is a strategy that capitalized on economic hardships. It involved offering financial rewards or benefits to those who align with actions or policies harmful to their community, creating internal discord and eroding communal solidarity. This tactic can significantly weaken the cultural and social structures of Aboriginal groups, undermining their collective resilience and perpetuating cycles of disadvantage. Counteracting this strategy is crucial for the empowerment and cultural preservation of the Aboriginal communities. Throughout history, colonial powers have employed this tactic in various contexts, from the recruitment of Indigenous scouts in colonial wars to the incentivization of community leaders to sign away land rights. In contemporary settings, similar strategies might be seen in the form of economic incentives for supporting 
extractive industries or development projects that threaten indigenous lands and livelihoods. Monetary incentives as a tactic to turn indigenous people against their own is manifestation of colonial exploitation that capitalizes on economic hardship and seeks to dismantle community cohesion and resistance. Recognizing and addressing this tactic is crucial for, for indigenous rights advocates, policymakers, and the communities themselves as a part of the broader struggle against colonial legacies and for the empowerment of indigenous people. Overall, the strategy of dividing indigenous populations is a potent tool for governments seeking to maintain control and suppress any dissent. By exploiting existing divisions and fostering conflicts, these governments undermine indigenous solidarity and resistance, making it more difficult for communities to assert their rights and autonomy. Recognizing and addressing these tactics is essential for indigenous movements to build unity and resilience in the face of ongoing challenges. The British Colonization of Burma. This colonization of Burma by the British Empire significantly impacted the ethnic diversity and territorial boundaries of the region. British colonial rule in Burma began in the 19th century and lasted until Burma gained independence in 1948. During this period, the British implemented policies that favored the dominant ethnic group, the Burmans, while marginalizing and disenfranchising all the other ethnic groups. One key strategy of British colonial policy was the divide and rule, which exploited ethnic and cultural divisions within Burma to maintain their control. The British favored the Burmans, who were the majority ethnic group, and granted them privilege and positions of power within the colonial administration. This approach exacerbated existing tensions between the Burmans and other ethnic groups such as the Karen, Kareni, Kachin, Shan, Mon, Arakan, and Jin, who were marginalized and excluded from political and economic opportunities. The British implemented land policies that further marginalized ethnic minority groups. Land ownership was often transferred to Burman elites and absentee landlords, leading to the dispossession of indigenous people from their ancestral lands. The British also introduced economic systems that favored export-oriented agriculture, which disenfranchised ethnic minority groups who relied on subsistence farming. After Burma gained independence in 1948, the legacy of British colonial policies persisted. The Burman-dominated government continued to marginalize ethnic minority groups, leading to decades of ethnic conflict and insurgency. In recent years, after the coup by the Burmese military regime, ethnic people have faced severe persecution and ethnic cleansing at the hands of the corrupt and brutal Burma military, resulting in a humanitarian crisis and mass displacement. The charge of the country's name from Burma to Myanmar by the military government is a strategic move loaded with political, cultural, and historical significance when it ostensibly aims to reflect a broader inclusion of the country's diverse ethnic makeup, it also serves as a tool for the military regime to assert its authority and reshape national identity on its own terms, Burmanization. The debate over the name continues to reflect broader struggles over democracy, national identity, and the legacy of colonialism in Burma. Some historical comparisons. While Native Americans in the United States, ethnic minorities in Burma, and Aboriginal peoples of Australia each have unique historical contexts and experiences, and there are notable similarities in how they were all marginalized by colonial powers and their respective governments, including dispossession of land. Native Americans, the U.S. government forcibly removed Native American tribes from their ancestral lands through policies such as the Indian Removal Act of 1830, leading to the loss of territory and disruption of traditional ways of life. The ethnic people of Burma, the British colonial government in Burma implemented land policies that favored the Burman majority, resulting in the displacement and disposition of ethnic minority groups from their traditional territories. For the Aboriginal peoples of Australia, British colonization involved the seizure of Aboriginal lands without consent or compensation, often justified by the doctrine of terra nullius, 
which denied indigenous lands rights and sovereignty. Forced assimilation and cultural suppression. For the Native Americans, the U.S. government implemented boarding schools, coercive policies aimed at assimilating Native American children into Euro-American culture, resulting in the loss of language, culture, and traditional practices. For the ethnic people of Burma, the Burmese government imposed cultural assimilation policies on ethnic minority groups, including restrictions on language, religious practices aimed at only to promote Burmanization. For the Aboriginal people of Australia, the Aboriginal children were forcibly removed from their families and placed in institutions or foster care under the Australian government's assimilation policies, resulting in the loss of cultural identity and connection to their heritage. Systemic discrimination and inequality. For the Native Americans, despite legal recognition of tribal sovereignty, Native Americans continue to face systemic discrimination and disparities in areas such as education, health care, and employment. Ethnic people of Burma, the minorities in Burma have been marginalized politically, economically, and socially by the dominant Burman government, resulting in ongoing conflict and human rights abuses that continue. For the Aboriginal people of Australia, Indigenous Australians experience disproportionately high rates of poverty, incarceration, and health disparities compared to non-Indigenous Australians, reflecting systemic inequalities and discrimination. For violence and exploitation, the Native American communities in the U.S. have experienced violence, exploitation, massacres, forced relocations, and land dispossession through conflicts with settlers, the military, and corporate interests. For the ethnic people of Burma, the ethnic minority groups in Burma have been subjected to violence and human rights abuses by the Burmese military, including forced labor, sexual violence, massacres, forced relocations, and displacement. For the Aboriginal people of Australia, the British colonization and subsequent government policies led to massacres, forced relocation, and the destruction of Aboriginal communities, resulting in intergenerational trauma and ongoing social issues. Relocation is a particularly potent colonial tool that has disrupted communities, eroded cultural identity, and perpetuated cycles of poverty and marginalization for indigenous people. Here's how relocation has impacted Native Americans, ethnic minorities in Burma, and the Aboriginal people of Australia. For Native Americans, in the 19th and 20th centuries, the U.S. government implemented various relocation programs aimed at forcibly removing Native American tribes from their traditional lands to designated reservations. One of the most notable examples is the Indian Removal Act of 1830, which led to the forced relocation of numerous tribes, including the Cherokee, Choctaw, Seminole, Creek, and Chickasaw, to Indian territories, present day as Oklahoma. The impact of this, the relocation disrupted tribal communities and traditional ways of life, resulting in loss of cultural identity, social cohesion, economic self-sufficiency, Many tribes suffered devastating losses of life during forced marches such as the Trail of Tears. Relocation also confined Native Americans to marginal lands with very limited resources, perpetuating cycles of poverty and dependency. For the ethnic people of Burma, relocation and resettlement. The Burmese government has employed relocation and resettlement tactics as part of its counterinsurgency strategies to control ethnic minority populations and suppress the armed resistance groups. This has included forced displacement of villagers from conflict-affected areas to government-controlled relocation sites for internally displaced persons, IDP camps. The impact, relocation has disrupted traditional livelihood and social structures, leading to loss of land, property, and cultural heritage. Many displaced communities face inadequate access to food, healthcare, education, and work opportunities in the relocation sites. Moreover, the relocation camps often have exacerbated the tensions between ethnic groups and fosters mistrust and resentment towards the government. For the Aboriginal peoples of Australia, the forced removal and assimilation policies from the Australian government, which implemented these assimilation policies, included the forced removal of Aboriginal children from their families known as the Stolen Generation. Children were placed in institutions or foster care with non-Indigenous families, often far from their communities, 
and community heritage. The forced removal of Aboriginal children resulting in profound trauma, loss of cultural identity, and disconnection from their families and communities. Many stolen generation survivors experienced abuse, neglect, discrimination, and institutional care. The intergenerational impacts of forced removal continue to affect the Aboriginal families and communities, contributing to social issues such as substance abuse, mental health problems, and family breakdowns. Overall, while specific historical and cultural contexts vary, Native Americans, ethnic minorities in Burma, and Aboriginal people of Australia share common experiences of marginalization, dispossession, and discrimination at the hands of colonial powers and their respective governments. These similarities highlight the enduring legacies of colonialism and the ongoing struggles for justice and equality faced by indigenous communities worldwide 